Hi YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark, Nuts for Art. Um, I'm going to continue reading this book, Population Control Through Nuclear Pollution, by Arthur Tamplin and John Goffman. We're in Chapter 5. We're at the bottom of page 59, and we're in the subchapter, A New Program to Study the Effects of Radioactivity. And if you recall, this is where John Goffman had put a little caveat that he did not want the AEC to filter anything, and they just finished telling him, don't worry, don't worry. We're going to let you have free reign. So we're leaving off the last sentence on page 59. And let me put my double glasses on. I know it looks kooky. I have to go to the eye doctor. It's one of these weird things i got to deal with. But in the meantime, I'm going to read with my double glasses. <laughs> so their agreements were quickly reached to establish the program. Indeed, it is doubtful that any new program sponsored by the AEC ever got approved so rapidly as this one. A clear reflection of the urgency by the Atomic Energy Commission to demonstrate responsiveness to the issue of public health and safety, especially after the grand blunders in Utah after, during 1962. And immediately the AEC issued the following promissory news, news release in, in newspapers around the in, the country. <clears throat> Let me read that again. And immediately the AEC issued the following promising news release to newspapers around the country. See, it looks like a news release here. It goes through here and here. U.S. Atomic Energy Commission, San Francisco Operations Office, 2111 Bancroft Way, Berkeley 4, California, S-A-N-N-O-339. I have no idea what that means. S8 San Francisco number 339. Maybe that's what that means. Advance for release. Telephone. T. T. It's like capital T-H and then it spells Thornwall. T-H-1-5620 extension 212. After 7 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Friday, May 31st, 1963. Biomedical studies planned for AEC's Livermore Laboratory. That's where Kevin's going. A comprehensive long-range program to explore in greater breadth and depth and resources of man-made environmental radioactivity and the effects upon plants, animals, and human beings was announced by the Atomic Energy Commission. The program will be built up over a long period of time as scientists become available to fill the developing needs for specific talents. The Livermore studies will place special emphasis on early fallout, that fallout which follows the nuclear detonation within hours or days. The studies will become an integral part of the Commission's biomedical research program and will be closely coordinated with AEC-sponsored research being conducted at many other laboratories throughout the nation. Hmm. The broad studies of worldwide fallout and radiation effects on living systems going on elsewhere will be continued. So check out that sentence. The studies will become an integral part of the Commission's biomedical research program and will be closely coordinated with AEC-sponsored research being conducted at many other laboratories throughout the nation. That means that they're going to tell everybody what to do. Shit. Okay. The Commission has recognized the need for a central group which would plan and conduct studies of environmental contamination due to release of radioactivity from nuclear detonations conducted for peaceful or military purposes. At the request of the Commission, a program has been outlined and is being established at its Livermore, California site, operated by the University of California Lawrence Radiation Laboratory. During fiscal year 1964, it is estimated that the operating cost will be about $2 million. Dr. John S. Foster, Jr., director of the Livermore Laboratory, was appointed by doc, was a, has appointed Dr. John W. Goffman to head the new program and to be an associate director of the laboratory. 
Dr. Goffman is a professor of medical physics in the Donner Laboratory at the University of California's Berkeley campus. The presence at Livermore of scientists knowledgeable in the ways of man-made radiation is generated and released. Excuse me, I don't understand the sentence. The presence at Livermore of scientists knowledgeable in the ways man-made radiation is generated and released, plus the concentration of pertinent facilities, makes Livermore unusually suitable for assessing the implications of the broad range of possible conditions under which such releases might occur. That's a long fucking run-on sentence. No wonder they can't fucking fix the nuclear problem. Oh, my God. <clears throat> okay. Included will be the studies of short-lived and long-lived fission products and neutron-induced activity, with particular emphasis on their distribution and effects in living materials. Materials. Living materials. That means like me and you. <laughs> In particular, the laboratory will investigate the entire chain of events leading to radiation exposure of human beings which might follow. Liars. One of the early studies contemplated will be concerned with the short-lived fission product, iodine-131, which we don't even hear about, but for sure, no doubt, it's from Fukushima, right? Biological and medical research will now be closely integrated with existing physical science programs at the laboratory, as for example, the Plowshare program, in which nuclear explosives are being developed for huge earth-moving projects, mining operations, etc. This, highly, this existing highly developed computer facilities at Livermore will be a vital aid in a continuing collation of the storehouse of research information already available. And note to editors and correspondents, this information is being issued simultaneously by AEC headquarters in Washington, D.C. That's the end of the press release. One veteran observer of the, of the government scene, a bit hardened by experience, reacted to this AEC news release almost immediately. I.F. Stone, in his bi-weekly of June 24, 1963, wrote, The Lawrence Radiation Laboratory and the Atomic Energy Commission have just announced establishment of a long-range program to study the effects of radioactivity on man. That's 1963, you guys. The Lawrence Radiation Laboratory is a stronghold of Dr. Edward Teller, the father of the hydrogen bomb, and so shortly we can expect to hear an announcement from the Lawrence Laboratory that radioiodine is good for babies. That sounds like who? Art Robinson here in Oregon. We actually have a politician in Oregon running on that thesis that radioactivity is good for us. Back to the book. Sorry about this. The cynicism reflected by such a remark was typical of opinions prevalent at that time concerning the credibility of the Atomic, Energies concern, the Atomic Energy Commission concerning health matters. We at the Lawrence Lab's new biomedical division winced a little at this remark. We knew it meant our job was going to be a bit harder than ever since people were likely to be unbelieving of any statements made by, made by an AEC-supported laboratory. But we knew the problems involved here were, desperate, were of desperate importance to the health and welfare of our country, and indeed for human beings in general, and we were to de determined to do a first-rate job to evaluate the true potential hazard realistically and honestly. However, we now know that Mr. Stone appreciated far better than we did the difficulty we would have getting the truth to the public without repression. As we saw the problem, there were four essential aspects. One, learning about all the major AEC programs that could be expected to be a major source of release of radiation and radioactivity and whether constructive suggestions could be made for minimizing radioactivity release at the source. Among these programs were nuclear weapons testing, peaceful nuclear explosions and so-called plowshare program, nuclear reactors for power generation and space flight, 
and radioisotopes for industry and medical use. Two, learning in a systematic manner how radioactive pollution would distribute themselves from nuclear events in the air, water, soil, and finally the foodstuffs ultimately consumed by man and the final dose of radiation of man everywhere in the world and over a long period of time had to be known for each nuclear event if indeed we were ever to evaluate the ultimate health impact of radioactive release. That fucking went away a long time ago, didn't it? <laughs> They'd never even tried that one. Hmm. Okay. Learning the health effects upon this generation of humans and upon future generations of the accumulation of radioactivity in these various tissues of the body. For this generation, our concern was the so-called somatic symptoms, prominent among which are leukemia and various other forms of cancer. For future generations, our concerns were necessarily manifold, including spontaneous abortion of fetuses, late fetal deaths, neonatal deaths, and a host of diseases. Man is heir. Man is heir to because of this, because of his genetic constitution. Indeed, we know how medically genetic inheritance or a so-called constitution plays a role in virtually all the important diseases of man. I think I should read that part again. I didn't really get it. Learning the effects upon this generation of humans and upon future generations of the accumulation of radioactivity in the various tissues of the body. For this generation, our concern was with the so-called somatic effects, prominent among which are the leukemia and various forms of cancer. For future generations, our concern were necessarily manifold, including spontaneous abortion of fetuses, late fetal deaths, neonatal deaths and a host of diseases man is heir to because of his genetic constitution. Okay. Indeed, we now know medically genetic inheritance or our so-called constitution plays a role in virtually all the important diseases of man. And number four, countermeasure research. At every step along the pathway from nuclear source to effect of radioactivity in man, a potential exists for possible reduction in danger by cutting down radioactivity release at the source, by intercepting it at the food chain level, by procedures of increasing the rapidity of excretion of such materials from man's body, and finally, by attempting to prevent the effect on health that radio radiation received. Uh. Countermeasure research, so like basically how to overcome it. We saw the problem. There were four essential aspects. Learning all of their programs. Hmm. Learning a systematic manner on how radio radioactive pollution would distribute the cells from nuclear events in our environment and ultimately us. And learning the effects upon this generation and the next one and then how to fix it. I guess we're all still at that point, aren't we? That's really what, this is all we're asking right now. This is what the Fukushima truth movement is really about. The whole nuclear, it's not, it is anti-nuclear, but it's really anti-fascism. It's anti-lies. These people are hiding scientific evidence that radioactivity kills us. These four elements are what we need to have the answer to. These questions. Wow. Okay, uh, I'm going to stop. I'm on page 63. The next subtitle is The Wonderful Promise of Nuclear Explosives. So I'll see you guys again soon. Um, I'm going to make more of an effort. I'm going to keep my laptop with me so no matter where I go, I can post at least every other day. Um, anyways, ciao you guys and I'll talk to you later. Bye.